we have an inverse function question right here. So I'll start by writing the original f of x, 11 plus. Now this third root of x, there's a few ways to write that. I'm going to write it as a one-third power. Uh, roots are reciprocal powers, meaning it's one over that number. So if this was a square root, well, if it's a square root, a lot of times you won't even see the number written up there. But if it's a square root, it would be a one-half power. This is a cube root, so it's a one-third power. Okay, so how do you find an inverse? Well, this is in the notes and your book, but there's two steps. So we're going to find the inverse of y equals f of x. And step one, you're going to swap x with y. And what that will look like, x equals f of y. Step two, solve for y. Now, depending on the actual problem, solving for y will have different steps. Just depends on what this function f is doing. Uh, when you solve for y, I'll just write dot, 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 representing the algebra steps. What you're going to get is y equals some expression of x, and that expression is going to be f inverse. All right, let's go ahead and start. First thing you should worry about, well, there's no y. Well, that's not a problem. Uh, f of x equals y. So we got y equals 11 plus x to the one third. All right. So at least now I have a y so I can swap. So we're going to apply step one. Swap x and y. So why am I writing all these steps down? Well, I've written them twice because hopefully that makes you write them twice and you're way more likely to remember them in the future. So we're going to swap x and y. Another really good thing is you come back and look at your work later, you're going to see, oh, I'm just swapping x and y, obviously. I'm finding the inverse, obviously. If all this stuff is missing and you come back and look at your work and you just see some random stuff, you're going to have trouble figuring out what you actually did. So now we're swapping x and y. This case was pretty easy. Just to warn you, sometimes there may be like another x or x squared, whatever. So you may actually end up with multiple places where x appears and you have to make sure every place x appears, you turn them all into y's. All right, step two, solve for y. So we look at this, y right here has two friends. It's got an 11 friend and a one third friend. When you're unsure about what to do first, I recommend go up the order of operations when you're doing algebra and you're not sure. So I see addition subtractions happening. Let's get that 11 friend out of here. So we're going to subtract 11 on both sides. So we have x minus 11 equals y to the one third. So how do we get rid of this one third power? Well, we take both sides and cube them. Why does that work? It works because y to the one third power cubed, you multiply powers here. So this is y to the one third times three, which is just y to the first power, also known as just y. So that's the reason we're cubing both sides. So how to write that? I just put a cube over here to indicate I'm cubing the entire equation. Now on the left side, I have to cube the entire left side. So this is x minus 11 whole thing cubed equals the 1 third times 3 cancels out. And it's just y to the first power. All right, what can we do with the cube power? If you really want, you can cube it, but just remember, that's what cubing means. Multiply by itself three times. Boom, boom, boom. All right, you can do this. It's not the worst algebra problem to do, but I recommend you just leave it alone the way it's written here. All right, the last step over here on our solve for y, the last step tells us this is f inverse of x.